Everything starts in the future 10 years after creatures have taken over the Earth. Our protagonist, Gang Finn, is defending himself from an attack while telling his sister, Kingsher, to run away. However, the monster kicks him in the stomach. Immediately, it comes to finish him off. But his sister jumps in front of the creature. She takes a steel whip to her back. Yang Fen screams and grabs his sister, asking why she did that. At that moment, he gains the power of a protagonist who has suffered, and he slashes, cutting off the monster's arm and head. He takes the creature's core and tells his sister that he will get holy water. He then takes her to Yang Lu base no. 3. However, as soon as he reaches the gate, he sees two people fighting with all their strength. The problem is that the female competitor is our protagonist's girlfriend. While she is confused by his sudden appearance, a guy named Cloud says he didn't expect him to survive a level 8 boss. Yang Fen screams, asking how he knew it was a level 8 monster. However, his sister starts to agonize. He says they'll talk about it later and demands the holy water immediately. But his girlfriend's opponent asks why he should give something so valuable to his sister. Yang Fen says he will make a trade and offers his ring. Yes, it's true, guys, he's offering the ring. He tells the guy that with it, he can buy anything he wants. The guy smiles but warns that if he kills him, he can take the ring without paying anything. The only sad thing would be letting his pretty little sister die. Yang Fen doesn't like this at all. He places his sister against the wall and slashes at Cloud, but the guy just dodges, jumping away. He sends energy into Yang Fen's chest and asks if he thinks he can win while so exhausted. He then goes to put his finger on Yang Fen's ring, but Yang Fen says that would only happen in his dreams and eats the ring immediately. The guy smiles, saying now he will have to take it by force. He slashes at him, saying he will cut it out of him halfway. But something seems to activate in the ring, and his body radiates a blinding light. Time rewinds and the boy wakes up. As soon as he sees the clock, he knows he has three hours before everything starts. He pinches his face, wondering if he reincarnated or if he's in a dream. Cloud is actually his girlfriend's name, and this guy was already making moves before the system. And now he wonders if he should kill her now with Thanker. At least due to the betrayal, he has the chance to change his future. And in this life, he swears to protect his family and close friends. And of course, those who wronged him will not get off easy. Suddenly, someone kicks the door open. And the guys ask Cloud how she has the nerve to reject the boss and stay with that loser. They enter the room, saying they'll break his legs. Cloud says she's terrified, but Yang Fen knows it's all an act. The guy comes to hit him, but he easily dodges. The guy doesn't even react when Yang Fen grabs his neck and makes him kiss the wall. The chubby guy is confused, and Cloud has no idea how this guy got so strong. He turns to the guy and says it's his turn to take a hit to the chin. He starts to leave the room and Cloud says he can't just walk away like that. After all, they did everything possible the night before. However, now he is cold and calculating and says it's good for her not to appear in front of him, otherwise she will die. He grabs his coat and leaves. Meanwhile, she wonders how this bastard had the courage to crush her and disappear the next day. Outside, he wonders why it's so dark and sees the black seeds. He knows this is a premonition that the eruption is about to begin. Immediately, he calls his sister, who in a past life died from a stab in the back. But now, she's perfectly fine and in good health. She answers jokingly, asking if he misses his little sister. However, Yang Fen just tells her to close all the curtains now. He warns her that no matter who rings the doorbell, she shouldn't open the door until he arrives. She gets confused and mentions that she is in the dormitory, which is very secure. Meanwhile, she goes to the window and says something strange is happening. It looks like people are attacking each other. The protagonist calls out to her, but the call drops. At least he is reassured that she survived this day in the past life too. And if the ring is glowing, it means there is a summoner nearby. The energy seems to get stronger as he approaches a women's restroom. He enters and sees a girl crouching, but she has already turned into a zombie. At that moment, she comes towards him. The guy is a bit off because it's the first time he thinks it's a waste for someone with a body like that to turn into a zombie. However, he doesn't hesitate and strikes her with an axe. He quickly grabs the crystal because he needs to evolve as fast as possible. At that moment, a strange man with a cloak appears. These are the merchants, and in the past life, it took him three months to find the first one. These guys sell items, and their rank is related to the color of the cloak. And that crystal he took from the girl can be exchanged for some items. In the shop, just like in the past life, he still gets discounts for having that ring. He decides to check if the weekly function still works. Using a golden hammer, it appears. He realizes it is an epic item, but the shop dissolves. Unfortunately, he doesn't have enough stones to buy it yet. That's when he hears a scream behind one of the doors. He approaches and sees a zombie going towards two girls. Both are obviously healthy, and the redhead tells her friend to hand over the knife. When she tries to say something to the zombie, our guy arrives and cuts down another one. The girls are startled, and he explains that the woman had already turned into a zombie because she was bitten. With that, the redhead introduces herself as Yu, and her friend is named Mumu. Yang Fen thinks it's a coincidence because Mumu becomes a famous biomedical scientist in the apocalypse. And the redhead girl becomes a trump card for one of the largest bases. Suddenly, a monster appears behind him. However, you throw something at its shoulder. The creature gets back up, and Yang Fen explains that if you don't remove its head, it won't die. 
With that, he gives it a full swing and goes to collect the crystal. Yu thinks he is incredibly strong and seems to be a pervert since he always approaches the bodies. Our guy, on the other hand, is only thinking about the potential the two have. The base three where they stayed was considered indestructible. Suddenly, Yu interrupts his thoughts and asks if he is looking for this. He sees she has a crystal and asks where she found it. Her friend points to Mumu and says she was the one messing with the bodies. The poor girl tries to explain that she was just studying them, and it's not what he thinks. With that, Yu says it would be good if he joined their group. Mumu seems to agree, and Yang Fen is interested since it will make it easier to get his revenge. So he agrees, and the girls tell them to stop staring at them so much and go outside so they can dress. A while later, they come out, and Yu was prepared for the apocalypse, as she already had all the gear. They talk about going to a safe place, but Yang Fen says the creatures are everywhere and are evolving. That catches Yu's attention, and she asks if they can evolve too. After a while, he introduces himself and says he has three conditions. They have to follow every order, hand over all the crystals, and traitors will die. He plans to put the girls to work in the apocalypse. However, they talk among themselves, saying he seems very competent, so they agree to these conditions. With that, they head to school number one. It's full of zombies, and Yu asks where they are going. Yang Fen says just to follow him and collect the crystals. With that, he heads towards the zombies, and they think it's very risky. However, he just raises the axe and cuts the first one in half, dropping the crystal. The artist got carried away because this panel wasn't necessary. She comments that it seems like an accumulation of vitamins and minerals, and maybe that's why they became zombies. Yu wonders if they would turn into zombies too by eating it. But if that were the case, why is Yang Fen so keen on collecting so many? While they were watching him, a zombie approached from behind. However, it seems a car ran over it. A guy says that despite the circumstances, he found Yong Yu again. His name is Mu Tian, and he is a fanatical follower of the girl. The two already wonder why this piece of trash is there. Meanwhile, Yang Fen is killing zombies, wondering why they are so distracted. These girls seem to be in Disneyland, and Yu is saying the guy is the prince of the school. He turns around, but Mu Tian starts talking to him, saying that he could be a good bodyguard. That offer reminds Yang Fen that in the future, he will be out of money and in need of food and weapons. However, at that moment, Mumu was being attacked by two zombies. Yang Fen ignores the conversation and kills the two zombies, saying they attracted too much attention. From a distance, Mu Tian tells him to come back while our guy has already run off. The guy starts getting angry because even the zombies are running after him. And now the trio is surrounded. What Yang Fen finds most frightening is that nearby, there is a second-tier flower, which is an evolved creature. Mumu asks if even plants are becoming zombies. At that moment, the flower's pollen begins to fall on the zombies. Yang Fen warns that it's a technique it uses to take control of the creatures. He continues killing as many as he can, telling them to follow the path he is clearing. Numu is about to be attacked when Yu kicks the monster. Our guy is impressed that she is fighting without any weapons. Then the guy approaches with the car, telling Yu not to fear because he will save her. With that, he accelerates and starts running over a bunch of zombies. He reaches the door and Yang Fen tells everyone to get in with him. However, as soon as he's inside, he shuts the door, and they ask what he is doing. Yu tells him to open it, but he says she will only get in if she becomes his girlfriend. She responds that he is despicable, but he says she is wrong for denying him and being with this poor guy. With that, they turn to Yang Fen and ask where they are going. He tells them to run to the back of the cafeteria. With that, they start to retreat while he thinks he has to deal with a flower, or the number of zombies won't decrease. Passing through the creatures, he wonders how it is already at rank 2. Finally, he finds an opportunity and strikes it with an axe. The problem is that the plant seems to be as hard as steel. It doesn't make any sense, and he wonders if his return to the past created some changes. With another pollen blast from the plant, the creatures start to surround him. He manages to hit one in the leg, but another comes from behind. Then the monster gets a small knife to the forehead. He asks what they are doing there, and the girls say they wouldn't abandon him to die like that. He notices a scratch on Yu's arm and asks if she is hurt. She tells him to ignore it and focus on destroying the plant for now. Mumu explains that she wants to use that gas cylinder to set the creature on fire. With that, Yu goes to the front to hold off the zombies. He grabs the cylinder, throws it at the monster, and lights it up. With that, the monster burns, and he is grateful it's a rank 2 creature. However, that's when he notices the creature's death pollen. He warns them to be careful, as it will make them fall asleep. A while later, someone is walking among the zombies looking for Yu. It is Mu Tian, wondering how they defeated all that. He approaches the plant and sees something on the ground. As soon as he touches the petal, something shoots up from the soil, and he spits blood. Meanwhile, Yu is telling our guy that she is feeling a bit dizzy. He explains that she got infected, and she tells him to kill her then. He throws her over his shoulder and tells her to relax. If she turns into a zombie, he will kill her without any hesitation. That's why I call a professional at calming people. While squeezing her gently, he says they need to get back to the women's restroom. He starts running and tells Mumu to follow him. He reaches the place and the vendor is there. He asks Mumu to hand over all the crystals, and they get a bit confused. Seeing him approach that person, she finds it strange to see someone standing in the middle of nowhere. With that, he activates the trade and disappears in front of them. The two were confused and wonder if they were abandoned. 
The poor guy is there seeing that purification water already costs four coins. That's capitalism's greed for you. The lucky rascal can use the ring to buy it cheaper. That's right, the oldest profession in the world. After buying everything, he spent 40 crystals and still has 60 left. He takes the item while thinking that in this life, he won't be anyone's slave. No one will be able to touch a hair on anyone he cares about. With that, he pours the item into a bottle and thinks that for now, he will keep things a secret. The transaction ends and he asks how the girl is. The girl is stretched out and Mumu explains she is about to die. He takes a big gulp and you know what he's going to do. That's right, he will use the strongest muscle in the body to heal the girl. The friend is scared, but at the same time, Mu's hand starts to heal. As soon as she wakes up, she shoots at our guy, thinking he believes this will save anyone. He tries to explain it was the only way when the friend throws herself, thanking him for not letting her die. Yu concludes that it must have something to do with the hooded guy. Our guy says she is smart and explains that getting close to him allows you to enter a trading area. However, he tells them to hurry as they can't waste time. Once outside, he advises them to take advantage of the fallen zombies to collect the crystals. Then one of the zombies approaches. He realizes it's Mu Qian. However, he notices something and tries to protect the two girls. At the same moment, a Tokyo Ghoul-style attack comes for Yu. But our guy is a hero and saves her again. Mumu almost swerves, and he warns that the plant has a distance limit. However, the two are startled. She has been immobilized and is scared about this. Thank God Yang Fen cuts it down before the video falls apart. He tells them to be more careful, and she apologizes for being so slow. The plant sends out a toxin attack, and he warns everyone to come to their mouths. However, once again, the creature comes from behind. This persistent little plant is almost killing him. But he has the legendary ring that instantly purifies impurities, allowing him to cut the plant. Its stones were right on that branch and he collects them. You ask what it is and he says it's a second-degree core that can't be eaten yet. Hearing that, she asks if it's meant to be eaten, and he says yes. However, at the same moment, another little plant emerges from the ground and Mumu warns them to be careful. He approaches and says not to worry. It's an essence with the flower's attributes. Yu is confused and he says he'll explain later. Because now they have to get back to the merchant. The rascal is still in a women's restroom, huh? This guy is peculiar. With that, he initiates the trade and buys a gun, a potion, and the legendary hammer. The boy is broke again but hands the pistol and some experienced potions to you. She shows up with a rifle and asks if he wants one of those too. He says no while showing the little hammer. She asks what that is and he activates the item, saying she will see. A magic circle appears beneath him and he says that with this new profession and the ring, it will be hard to kill him. However, he says he doesn't seem to have changed much. But he just ignores it while grabbing the hammer, thinking that with this new profession, the sky's the limit. He uses the transformation on the axe, which changes to a liquid form and in the next instant becomes a sword. He explains that a forger can build any weapon and add an essence. He approaches the one he obtained and a blue aura emanates from the blade. He explains that like the plant, this blade now has the attribute to paralyze enemies. Mu asks if he could upgrade her scalpel. He grabs a shower head for more metal and makes two small knives. The two are impressed, saying it defies logic. He tells them to drink quickly, and Yu doesn't hesitate and hands one to Mumu. They ask if they will gain abilities, and he explains that only physical powers. The scientist already wanted to observe the potions and make her own, but because of the current risk, she drinks it quickly. With that, they start to glow a little and feel full of energy. He points in a direction, saying it's time to go save his sister. Finally, he remembered the poor girl, right? A zombie attacks him outside the car, and he accelerates towards it. They arrive at the women's dormitory in building number one. A bunch of zombies is following the car and they try to block the stairs using it. They stop there, get out, and start running. However, in the corridors, he feels something is not right. As he approaches his sister's room, the door is open and the window is broken. Yu squats peculiarly, saying his sister seems to have been hurt there. Our guy thinks that's impossible. Mumu goes to the bunk bed and says there's a phone there. It shows that her sports watch was disconnected 15 minutes ago. He says she can't be far, so they go looking for her. Meanwhile, on the seventh floor, a bunch of girls are tied up in a room. A guy grabs the protagonist's sister's chin and says this apocalypse is great because now they can play Uno together. She tells him to shut up or he'll get beaten by her brother, but he tells her to shut up. As she screams, he says that's what makes it fun. She thinks she should have listened to her brother and not opened the door for anyone. That's when someone kicks the door. She's overjoyed to see it's her brother, and our guy doesn't look like he came to play Uno either. Before the guy can say anything, he gets slashed in the chest. The guys nearby start saying he's crazy to come alone, but Yang Fen just ignores them and tells his sister not to worry. He delivers another Photoshop cut and another guy comes from above, but gets a little poke in the forehead. Yu finishes the last one. In two seconds, the last fool is alone there. He falls to the ground, begging to be forgiven and not killed. Yu says she feels bad for killing someone. Yang Fen tells her not to worry because these guys deserved it. With that, he unties his sister, and she comes to hug him, saying she was very scared. The other girls in the room thank him for saving them and say their safety now depends on him. However, the boy is cold, he says he rejects both of them. 
He points to the side and says he doesn't want to take care of trash in this end of the world, explaining that if they don't fend for themselves, they'll end up like those two on the floor. Finally, Mumu arrives on the top floor, and he says they found his sister, so it's time to go. The poor girls are just envious seeing that our guy will only protect those three. On the second floor, they observe that the car is surrounded by zombies, and our guy says he'll take care of it first. He jumps down, kneeing one and slashing another. He looks up and tells them to come down, it's all taken care of. In the next scene, they are approaching some other place. His sister says she's really hungry, and he tells them to stop at a supermarket. Yu says it's risky, but Mumu comments that they will need as many supplies as possible to survive. With that, she agrees and accelerates. They stop in front of the guard, and Yang says he'll handle it. He slashes and opens the door, and they're inside. Yu finds it strange that there's no one inside, and Mumu agrees. All the zombies are at the windows, but none of them are inside. Until Kingsura points out there's blood in one area. In one of the corridors, there's a giant pool. Mumu warns that it's human blood, so they should be careful. Our protagonist just tells them to go back and gather supplies while he deals with it. As he approaches the glass, he sees meat with blood on top. Probably someone cleared the zombies from inside and then attracted them to stay around. Yu says they found two backpacks full of supplies. Anfra knows that even though the ring can store some items, he will need more ways to stock up. That's when he feels something strange. On the second floor, someone is watching the camera, asking if it's her ex-boyfriend. Next to her is Claudia, dressed as a bunny, saying he was never her boyfriend, and that what happened in the morning was just a joke. However, he explains that he's a strange guy who woke up very strong as soon as this madness began. He grabs her face and asks if she's lying. She says no. He then says she will be mistreated tonight. Claudia looks at the camera, seething with anger at the protagonist. She says the bastard not only found another girlfriend, but also abandoned her with this pervert. Wang sees you on the camera and says she's not bad. And Claudia, who is not stupid, says it would be good if they had all three girls. Obviously, her plan is to be spared. The market guards say they have to deal with this because it's their supplies. Yangfen realizes there's a camera and tells everyone the rest as he needs to gather some things. He approaches you and warns her that they are being watched, so they should be careful. He whispers a plan to her. A while later, he's walking around since all these items will become extremely expensive, and he'll need to store a lot. The problem is that currently, the ring only has a capacity of 10 square meters. He picks up a bottle from the ground and throws it at the camera. Without anyone seeing, he pulls a lot of supplies into the ring. At that moment, a knife comes flying, and someone tells him to stop stealing. But our guy dodges and asks what this stealing business is about. Looking back, he recognizes Wang Wei Long, a bastard who made his life hell before the apocalypse. The guy doesn't hesitate and tells his friends to break the protagonist's legs. However, he elbows each one in the chin, and they both pass out. The other guards are confused about how this young guy is so strong. Wang says he sent people to capture the girls, and if he resists, they will all die. But someone behind asks what he's talking about. It's you, saying he sent a bunch of trash. The guy is confused that the girl took down his friends. With that, he throws himself at Yang's feet, saying he was commanded by a guy named Zhao Yun. However, at the same moment, he grabs a baton from his back and tries to take a swing at him. As soon as it touches Yang's hand, he activates his reforging ability, transforming the baton into a blade. The guy rides on the ground, asking what kind of magic this is. At the same moment, the other workers start running. He was impressed by the ability. Our guy asks if he was really trying to kill him. The guy apologizes and says it was the other guy's idea. But our guy just says he'll let him go then. Straight to hell, as the poor guy drops dead. He wonders when she'll have such a magic. He finds the guys who ran away in a peculiar position, at least, begging to be saved. Yu says they were being commanded, so they could let them go. Our guy tells them to roll out of that place. And the guys literally do that. I think they took his words seriously. With that, he questions how long she'll just listen. Cloud, now called Zhao Yun Hong, runs to another room and says she'll take him with her even if she dies. She activates the motion sensor and the doors open. Our guy knows it was her doing. He tells you to go up and turn off the sensors while he holds off the zombies. His sister and Mumu come running and our guy throws himself in front. The poor girl, trembling, tries to protect Kingzur, saying she doesn't need to worry. Yu approaches the control room. As she goes to open the door, Zhao Yun tries to hit her with a bitten, but she dodges. She puts him in a chokehold, and soon after, he's tied up on the floor. Wow, kudos for the bandaging. While she curses, Yu tells her to shut up because she's closing it. The problem is, so many zombies are passing through the door that she can't close it. Yang Feng tells her not to worry that he's still there handling everything. A while later, they come down and Zhao Yun tells our guy that she's getting beaten by Yu and he needs to save her. Yu says it doesn't make sense, but Zhao Yun explains that she only opened the door to help them deal with the other guys. With that, our guy grabs her face and asks if she really wants to help. She brings out the heavy artillery and says she loves him too much. Our guy then says he'll give her a chance to prove her love and throws her out tied up. With that, she gets bitten. And that's it. She's writhing on the other side of the door. King Shur feels relieved that she died and Yu asks if that girl was really his ex-girlfriend. He just says yes and she says they can sleep there tonight and rest since there are bathrooms and places to change. 
They talk, take a shower, and Mumu, after taking the level 1 potion, doesn't even need glasses anymore. Meanwhile, our guy doesn't stop and is in the market collecting everything. The next morning, three guys approach the door, but as soon as they enter, there's nothing there. They wonder how it's possible for everything to have disappeared. One of them sees there's a second floor and tells everyone they have to go up there. The guys say it's risky, but the strong guy tells everyone to go first. When he opens the door, a blade comes at his face. It's our guy, and the chubby one begs not to be killed because they aren't zombies. Seeing Yang Fen's quick slash, the ones behind don't want to do anything. Suddenly, Yu opens the door and asks who they are. The guys beg to be saved, saying they just wanted something to eat. Our guy just lowers the blade and tells them to disappear because there's nothing there. However, the guy points to Yu and says he's sure there's food in the backpack. He makes a villainous face, saying there's enough there to keep them alive. A knife flies past the heads of the two, and she warns they will die before taking anything. The guy realizes that if Ant hit his head, he'd be dead. The guy in the green jacket apologizes, saying they're leaving. The strong guy asks if they're really going to do that, and his friend says to just follow them and set an ambush. The chubby one says he's not in the group with those guys and all he wants is some cat food. He even knows of a base with protection. When Yu starts to say something, something passes behind her. It climbs onto the chubby guy's shoulder, who says not to do anything. It's a kitten eating. He explains he came to the supermarket to see if he could get some canned food for her. Yu tells him to get it from downstairs, but he explains there's nothing left there. Yang Fen says he heard some sounds at night and someone must have stolen everything. Suddenly, King Shua appears, saying the kitten is very cute. She asks to hug it, but Yang Fen explains that the creature is mutated. The chubby guy angrily says his pet hasn't turned into a monster. King Zhu insists, saying she wants to touch it. He says no, but she ignores him and picks it up. She says they are now sisters and that she'll even share some food. A while later, the chubby guy asks if they won't come with him to the military base and they say no. King Shu is sad and waves goodbye to the kitten. At that moment, someone approaches. It's the guys from before bringing a bunch of zombie dogs. They approach, apologizing but saying they are scared. However, they exchange glances, signaling to start the plan. One of them grabs King Shu and another goes to attack you. As soon as the blade touches her, Yang Fen grabs his arm and warns him that he knew their intentions. Breaking the man's hand, he agonizes, begging to be released. Meanwhile, the other three are fighting over the resources. Seeing no way out, he warns about the zombie dogs. As the chubby guy gets distracted, he snatches the backpack and escapes on the motorcycle. Looking back, Yang Fen sees the dogs coming and King Shu tells him to be careful. In that moment, our guy grabs the other by the arm and throws him to the beasts. He tells everyone to take advantage of the distraction and run to the car. You ask Mumu to hold the backpack and Yang Fen tells her the beasts aren't that strong. With that, his sister arrives with the car and tells everyone to get in. As they were running, Yang Fen looks back and sees a mutated level 2 dog. He tells them to go ahead while they insist he gets in. However, he says not to get in the way and defends against the dog's attack. In the car, Yu says they need to go back to help, but Mumu explains it's better to trust Yang Fen. Meanwhile, our guy defends against the attacks and is almost on the ground, about to be devoured. However, he seems confident and tells the dog he needs to teach it a lesson. A swing of the blade to the side decapitates it. With that, he collects another white core, but a legion of devil dogs is approaching. The car stops, and Yu tells him to get in. She grabs his hand, and strangely, this girl seems to have some problem that got completely healed. And she pulls him into the adventure. This one is a professional player. They speed up the car, and our guy tells the chubby one to flee quickly. But looking back, Inkshuer notices that the wound isn't doing well. He seems to be losing consciousness from blood loss, but tries to pretend everything is fine, saying she'll be better soon. Our guy takes a look, says the cut is too deep, and now knows they need to find a vendor. He tells Mumu to stop the bleeding and instructs the chubby guy to head towards a pharmacy. He explains that there's nothing in the pharmacy and says he can take them to a base with doctors. Our guy agrees and they head in that direction. A while later, they arrive at the base of a giant building. He remembers being saved there in the past life too. The only problem is that the doctors there were killed because they saved people for free. With that, the girls help you, and the chubby guy tells everyone to follow him. He runs to the guards and asks for help, saying they have someone injured. But the front guards say no infected person can enter. Yu shows the wound, saying it was a stab, not a bite. However, the guards don't seem to care, saying if they say no, no one enters. Actually, each one there will have to pay 100 crystals, and she will have to pay at least 1,000. Yang Fen says it doesn't matter and shows that he has much more than that and even a crystal worth a lot. The guys are startled by the amount, and with that, they say they can enter then. However, they whisper to each other that as soon as Yang Fen turns his back, they'll finish him off. But our guy notices the reflection of a blade on the wall and asks if they're planning to kill him. Before they can respond, he warns they don't have the skill while delivering a slash. The first one goes down and his friend is terrified. He tries to attack our guy but gets hit in the back. Yu says it serves him right but she feels pain and Yang Fen tells her to be careful. His sister takes Yang Fen's crystals and shows that besides those, they only had four. 
Now the chubby guy is scared, thinking he's joined a group of killers and needs to flee. Then Selman from the second floor calls out to them. Clapping his hands, he approaches and asks the boy's name. Our protagonist introduces himself and the guy says he was the owner of a security business. He is the owner of that base and offers Yang Fen an opportunity to work for him. The protagonist responds that it's a good offer, but for now, the priority is to treat his friend. With that, the guy orders a bald guard to take them to a doctor. As he watches them go, he thinks Yang Fen has a lot of potential. They arrive in front of a shop and find it strange that it's the hospital. However, Yang Fen enters and says they need a doctor. A guy with glasses says it's him and tells them to bring the patient. Yang Fen notices that it's not the doctor he expected to be there. After examining the wound, the guy says a blood transfusion and a tetanus shot will cost 5,000 crystals. The chubby guy says that's a ridiculous price and pure greed. But the doctor says he's just doing business and tells them to go hunt zombies. Then someone behind the curtains says that if he won't treat her, she will. Our guy is startled. Obviously, it's a doctor who saves some lives and ends others. As she goes to examine you, the other doctor shouts that she can't waste the resources there like that. But she responds that the ethics of the profession do not allow her to let a patient die. The other guy tells her to shut up and says he owns the place and moves to slap her. But someone grabs his hand. It's Yang Fen who says if he wants to keep that hand intact, he better stop. The guy withdraws, saying he'll talk to General Leopard, and he'll sort this out. The doctor then tells him to leave the room because she needs to treat the girl. The psychopathic Yang Fen suddenly asks to be the doctor's boyfriend. He's thinking that she saved him so many times in the past life that he wants to help her as much as possible. But his friends are confused, and the chubby guy wonders how many women this guy needs. She's a bit confused and says she doesn't even know him well. While wondering why this lunatic suddenly came to confess like that, he says they can get to know each other side by side, and she calls him shameless. Meanwhile, Yu is lying down, getting a bit annoyed. The doctor then kicks him out of the room, saying she needs to treat the girl. A while later, she tells them to come in, as Yu is better. Everyone goes to talk to Yu, who says she's feeling a bit better. But then someone nearby says they are the ones who don't want to pay crystals. General Lippert arrives with a group and says medical resources are scarce, so they have to pay the crystals. Yang Fen says he wants to pay, but 5,000 for a cut is too much. Or are they creating this gang to extort people? One of the henchmen points at the protagonist and asks if he wants to die. However, our guy activates his ability and like Woody Woodpecker, redirects the guy's weapon. Leopard says the boy has skills and would even consider letting this treatment be free if he joined them. But he warns that if he doesn't comply, then he will have to be punished. Halme has the fire ability, and the guy on the left has the earth ability. And at the same moment, they send two attacks toward the group. Our guy stretches out his hand to save Lin Mio, already pulling her from the attacks and throwing her over his shoulder. He's worried about almost letting her die while she thinks that it's clear he has abilities. Knowing that the guy's group might have even more abilities, he says he'll join them, but they have to leave the doctor alone. The guy asks how he's going to use his ability to do that. And Yang Fen is sure he'll make great use of the craftsman class. He explains that he can make items from the shop 80% cheaper as long as he has the materials. Leopard says it's a great deal but warns him to fulfill his part. He then orders someone to prepare the accommodations. Meanwhile, Mumu questions if they are really going to stay among these bad people. Our guy explains that he's just taking advantage of the situation for you to recover and to get more resources. In one of the rooms, the boss comments that the plan is to steal part of his team and force him to make weapons for the rest of his life. The girl seems all motivated, saying the boss always plans very well. As they were being taken to their accommodations, a guy blocked Yang Fen and said he would take him to make weapons. Our guy just thought it was a pity he'd have to advance the plan like this. His sister wanted to go along, but the guy refused. Yang Fen told her it was fine and to rest. They entered a vault and the guy showed him more than 5,000 low-level stones. He warned that if he couldn't make the weapons, everyone would be thrown to the zombies. Seeing so many crystals, Yang Fen knew these guys had a lot of armament. He also pointed to a pile of materials, explaining that they'd been storing them because they didn't know their use. However, our guy saw this as a perfect chance to make equipment for his team. He explained to the guy that he doesn't like people watching him forge, so he should leave. The guy warned him not to try to escape because the place was like a sealed box with no way out. Seeing the items, our guy thought they were really idiots for not knowing the value of those things. He even found a spatial stone that serves to create storage spaces. He gathered some of the materials and began producing various items. A while later, he produced the best items but was exhausted. He decided to keep those to avoid drawing attention and also a few of the guy's stones. Outside, they were questioning if he could really turn trash into weapons. Another guy explained that he has a rare ability and is now a new employee. Not to mention, he also brought many beautiful women to the base. Yang Fen then left the room, warning that anyone who touched his companions would die. The guys explained that they would check the weapons, and if they were bad, he wouldn't see the sun tomorrow. When they got there, they saw several First Order blades and were impressed. It cost a total of a lot of trash and 3,600 stones instead of 6,000. Yang Fen explained that at his current level, he could only make 10 weapons a day. The guy slashed the wood and was impressed. 
thinking that if this is the case, they can't lose the boy. Gangfer then said that now that he had delivered the weapons, he wanted to see his companions. The guy said fine and told a guy with glasses to take him there. The only thing he found strange was that he didn't receive any expensive agent to install in these weapons. With that, the guy opened the door, and when he entered, the girls seemed to be very at home. They felt embarrassed, asking why he didn't knock on the door. He just ignored it and threw a bunch of stuff on the table, saying he made equipment for them. His sister was impressed that he pulled out all those items from that collar. She immediately grabbed it from his hand and shook it to see if more things would fall out. He explained it was a secret storage and that she could keep it. He also gave a second order Desert Eagle and glasses to Mumu. Yu was impressed because it was an infinite ammo weapon, and Mumu's item could analyze any other item. Sinan enters the room and Yangfen throws his shield to the boy, saying it will help defend against the zombies. He also throws a vest to the doctor, saying it will protect against mutants. She looks surprised and thanks him. Meanwhile, someone took the weapons Yangfen produced to Leopard for inspection. He tests them on the table and is impressed, saying the weapon is as good as the one he uses. Then the subordinate asks if it's time to take his women hostage. The boss says not yet, as they still have him in their grasp. They must remember that once the bullets run out, these melee weapons will be the best thing in this place. And there's nothing better than having a fool like Yangfen to keep making everything. Our guy sees them leaving for the collection and knows they like what he produced. This means he'll receive even more materials. When the revolution starts, he'll already have a Megazord team. Someone knocks on the door, saying there are people there. He opens it, and Lin Miao explains that Leopard's girlfriend is there to talk to him. He goes to the room and she introduces herself, saying the materials for today are ready for him to make a good weapon. However, he replies that he'll do it in the afternoon because he's still recovering. Our guy likes to see that Leopard seems very ambitious. But Hami says not to be so direct and that she can go to his room to help him produce. However, he grabs her by the arm, saying he has more things to do. The girl insists, asking what it is and saying she can go along. He asks if in such a big base there are any negotiators. She says yes, but to use them, you have to pay 3,000 crystals. Our guy thinks it's a rip-off, but has no choice and asks to go take a look. She takes him to the door and the guys there are all heavily armed. Hami asks to enter and he sees a rank 2 negotiator. He knows there's good stuff and hands over the 3,000 to use it. The guy explains he has 5 minutes, so he better hurry. He opens the transaction and starts observing everything available. He notices that almost all the evolution and ability items have been bought. However, there's a type of challenge that has been attempted twice. High-level trades have this system where you can enter a test, and if you win, you get the item. Knowing he doesn't have much time, he activates it immediately and finds himself in a closed room. At least time passes slower there, so he has about 50 minutes. At the same moment, a metal paw steps on the ground and he finds himself facing a mechanical bear. He doesn't flinch and just draws his blade, charging forward. The monster strikes his sword, and he realizes it's a third-order creature. The poor guy is thrown far, realizing the monster is faster, stronger, and bigger. However, he knows that if an eighth-level creature has a weakness, this one must have one too. When the monster comes to swipe at him, he puts the blade along with his arm and ends up cutting it. He tried to activate the paralysis effect, but it's still too weak. However, that pause the creature had was enough for him to jump and deliver a slash to its neck. With that, the bear falls defeated to the ground. Then someone says this kid is very interesting. He finds it strange, and with that, his forging skill rises to level 2. Someone was talking about searching him when he comes out of the bathroom, saying the five minutes hadn't passed. But the guys surround him and say they have to search him. Yangfen says he has the right to five minutes and got authorization from Lippard. However, the guy explains that it's forbidden to buy weapons, so he'll have to hand over everything he got. Hami says it's best for him to comply or he'll suffer the consequences. Our guy didn't like that and says he didn't trade anything because he didn't find the medicine he wanted. The soldier says everyone tells that lie. And Yangfen asks what happens if they don't find anything. The guy says he might even die because it doesn't make sense for him to be there for five minutes and not get anything. Our guy spreads his arms and tells them to search, but to remember what he said. The guy orders everyone to start looking. A while later, they tell the general they really didn't find anything. Out of nowhere, the guy gets startled, he grabs from the hand and hits him on the forehead. With that, he's on the ground and Yangfen says the price is paid. He looks at Haomi and asks if she wants to take a look too. Poor girl, trembling, says she's quite fine. Our guy warns that if she threatens him again, she'll be killed. And the crazy girl says that seeing such a brave guy makes her want to go to the gym and do squats. That's it. He ignores it and tries to leave, but she grabs him and says it's time to forge weapons. Again, he pulls his arm away and says he has no interest in someone else's woman. The crazy girl didn't like being rejected and says soon she'll make him her slave. In the room, Lin Mio comments that Yu's wound is already getting better. They believe it's because of the evolution of bodies in this world. In the living room, they are worried about the protagonist's safety, but Mumu says the biggest risk is probably them being there, trapped. The chubby guy says one of the problems is that he's starving because they're not getting much food. At that moment, Yangfen appears and tells everyone not to worry. They get excited and he throws a bunch of stuff for them to eat. With that, they finally relax and our guy tells them not to open the door because he has things to resolve today. 
In the room, he knows there are levels 1 to 9 to become a forger, and the only person who reached the maximum level in the past life built a base so impenetrable that no one could even break the walls. And that's the level he wants to reach in this life too. The good thing about level 2 is that you can receive special effects without adding crystals. And when you do add the effect, it gets even better. In that pile of junk, he found a level 2 crystal that he decided to keep. However, now is the perfect time so he fuses it with the blade. He finds it strange that it doesn't seem to be glowing with a special effect. But when he makes it cut, it creates a barrage of fire. He realizes he's created something worth at least thousands of crystals. In the next room, Leopard is commenting that today's weapons are very good. But the guy next to him questions if he really will give an evolution too once the boy makes 100 of them. Leopard says of course not. As soon as the boy makes 99, he'll say they're all trash. Seven days later, he delivers another batch of weapons. As always, he takes the best resources, produces good things, and hands the trash to the guys. He goes to the usual bathroom, and now everyone greets him. Obviously, they still ask for payment, and he gives it to avoid trouble. With that, he goes to the vendor and opens the trade. He activates the ring's weekly item function, hoping not to be disappointed. What appears is a staff that unlocks the sage profession. He gets excited because many people would kill just to have something like this. And now he needs to convince a certain person because her using it would be perfect. And maybe it's time to collect some necks. As he leaves the bathroom, Hami says he's making her feel ugly. And at the same moment, someone knocks on the room door. When they open it, it's the henchman from before saying the girls now have to go with them. King Zuru tries to run, but the guy orders everyone to be captured. They hide behind Yoon, who, with her level 2 gun, warns that their heads will explode. Their boss says his skin is steel and she'll embarrass herself if she does anything. She ignores him and shoots him in the arm. Immediately, he sees that his skin was penetrated. He gets angry, saying it looks like she's hiding something second grade. He jumps at her and manages to disarm her with a slap. At the same moment, he grabs her by the neck, and the others move toward the rest of the team. Mumu tries to use the glasses to find a weakness and help, but one of them grabs Lin Mio's wrist. Helmi steps in to help but sees everyone is immobilized. Before he can do anything, King Shuru is also caught. Now it's just him and the angry kitten. He orders her to attack the guy and she slashes his face. But at that moment, the boss orders everyone to stop, or the heads of the two girls will be blown up. Mumu and Sinan realize they have no choice. And with that, they too are immobilized. The only one left free is the kitten, but the guy decides to kill her. If the second tier weapon, he says he will have to test it. Meanwhile, Yangfen asks Hame what she means. She explains that his people have been captured. He asks who is doing this. She says it was Leopard's people, but insists she is not involved. As our guy tries to leave, she tells him not to rush because he will end up dying alone. She says she can help him if he hands over the item he received from Leopard. Our guy ignores her again and tells her to get lost. Now Hami is getting even angrier with him. He goes through the corridors and sees a lot of people apparently hunting for him. Realizing that Hami didn't lie and his people are in danger. The detail is that he was also imprisoned in this base so he knows where people are taken. Now it's time to repay all these favors. In one of the cells, a bunch of guards are standing at the door. One of them is distracted and Yangfen is right behind him. He pulls out the light armor and says it's time to use it. He activates the item that equips on his chest. Meanwhile, the team is being thrown into one of the cells. Yu comments that they can't just sit around doing nothing. And Mumu says that with her glasses, it's easy to analyze the rope so it can be cut. But as soon as they start cutting, the guys seem to notice something. They open the door and kick, telling them not to think of doing such things. Yu takes advantage and trips the guy, telling him not to hit women. And Sinan's kitten had already freed itself and freed him. With that, he mounts a peculiar guy. The problem is that they already have a gun pointed at the boy's forehead. And as a bonus, he gets slapped in the face. The kitten came running to help and started mewing. The guy immediately pulled the trigger and said he would kill her. He fired and the chubby guy threw himself in front. The guy said that if that was the case, he'd send him to heaven first. But at that moment, something came flying and a boot hit the guy in the face. He asked who had attacked him. From the door, Yangfen with his flaming blade said it was him. Already warning that they seem eager to die. The guys surrounded him and told everyone to shoot, shouting that he should run. But this boy is in the matrix. He pulled out his blades and cut the bullets in the air. His sword was creating a sort of gravitational field where no bullets could enter. The chubby guy seemed to be recording. Yangfen pulled the sword and slashed the first two. The girls were impressed until one threatened to kill his sister. But Lin Mio came from behind and tripped him. She's crazy. With that, his sister ran to our guy and the man pointed at him. Of course, he disconnected the guy's arm in Photoshop. Our guy said goodbye and the man was killed. He then shouted to everyone that they were going to escape the base now. But someone asked what he was talking about. It was Mr. Leopard with his entire team saying it wouldn't be that easy. He asked why Yangfen did something like this when he had been treated so well. The chubby guy stepped in front, activating his shield, saying he wouldn't let anything happen. But Leopard said he'd make the boy his third in command if he stopped this foolish resistance. Our guy said it was a great auction since he only had a bunch of women by his side. You told him not to worry about her since he saved her. Meanwhile, 
The chumpy guy admitted he lied about having been to this base before. Even Lin Miao said it was better for him to run since she was from this base. However, Yang Fen said the offer was good, but he wasn't very interested. Mumu pointed out a weak spot on the wall and he broke it immediately. With that, the kids started to escape by climbing the rubble. Leopard ordered them to shoot but Sidon stepped in front with a shield defending everyone. However, one of the awakened ones jumped, asking if that move could be blocked. Sidon realized he was going to die but Yang Fen slashed midair. The guy managed to dodge and activated an earth magic in his direction. Our guy dodged to the side, activating the blade and moving forward. The slash hit the neck and even with tough skin, it left a cut. The guy asked how it was possible to break his petrification. But Yang Fen just jumped, saying he would die without knowing and slashed him. The girls kept urging them to escape and Leopard ordered his men to finish them off. The chubby guy stepped in front but our guy told him to run while he protected them. The girls started pulling Sinan and the guys even launched a bazooka shot. The problem was it hit the ceiling, closing the exit. Yang Fen took advantage of this to slip through and jump to the other side. With that, his sister celebrated and he returned the weapon to Yu, telling her to be more careful. She got emotional seeing that he hadn't forgotten her. But then an explosion came from where they had come from. The captain actually transformed into Leopard, saying they wouldn't leave today. Yu fired a few bullets, but the guy was too fast and easily dodged. A second later, he was almost in front of Yu, but Yang Fen stepped in to defend and block the first attack. He warned everyone to flee because no one stood a chance against him. The group had to retreat due to the horde of zombies. Leopard let out a roar, cutting everything around. Yang Fen had to run to the group to activate the shield and defend against the attack. Realizing that the guy had consumed too many resources, Mumu ran towards a car telling them to follow, and the other girls went too. While Leopard activates a technique in his paw and warns that now he will tear off Yang Fen's leg. He prepares and jumps towards the boy who is calmly waiting for him to arrive. The guy says he's trash and thinks he's going to win with that rank 1 weapon. However, Yang Fen slashes at his hand, forcing the guy to defend himself. But all of his claws are cut off and our guy smiles, saying he made this with the materials that the guy himself gave him. Leopard says it's impossible because he can only make rank 1 items. That's when Yang Fen reveals that for a base chief, the guy is very naive. Leopard hesitates for a second when he sees that Yang Fen has a second rank weapon and decides to wait for Hami. But in the meantime, the girls approach with a car and gets in to flee. However, the chief concludes that if the boy could really defeat him, he would have come at him. And with that, he starts running after the car, saying he knows he was bluffing. Yu tries to shoot, but he easily dodges. Yang Fen tells them to head to the part of the city with more zombies, while Lippert is right next to the car, keeping up. They start passing through the horde of zombies. The car can easily ignore them, but Lippert has to deal with a few. King Zur celebrates that he's falling behind, but the guy with a roar cuts everything in half. He explodes the area and resumes chasing the car. The crew doesn't understand why they can't escape and tells Mumu to speed up, but then she warns that there's something ahead of them. There was a giant zombie, and Yang Fen warned that it was a third-class one. Our guy immediately told them to stop the car and warned that third-class is much more dangerous than Leopard himself. The monster jumped towards the car and Leopard came right behind. But the third-class monster sensed that Leopard was more dangerous and went after him. The base leader got furious while Yang Fen told them to speed up the car. They left the two fighting and headed in another direction. Mumu found it strange that the creature didn't attack them, and he explained it was because Leopard was more dangerous. The doctor then asked where they were going and our guy said to head to Hoshin City. He noticed a strange expression on Yu's face and asked what was wrong. She said it was nothing. But Mumu said that Yu's relatives lived in Jigawa City, so she probably wanted to go there. Yang Fen knew very well that this city was one of the most chaotic during the apocalypse. But it was also one of the places with the highest number of supernatural creatures. And most importantly, the person he wants revenge on is near there. So he told them to head in that direction, and Yu thanked him. Our guy strokes his sister's hair, explaining that their relatives are fine as he already called them. He knows they'll survive for at least six months, just like in the past life. Meanwhile, Yu is thinking that he changed the route and handed over a weapon. On the other hand, he asked to be the doctor's boyfriend. Looking at herself, she says it's not so bad, she can compete. Then he says he forgot something. He pulls out a class card to give to Lin Mio, saying it's perfect for her. Yu knows that a class card is very valuable, having seen him use one. Our guy touches her forehead, saying that a new world is about to open up. Her eyes shine and she explains that she received a class called Sage. The chubby guy asks if the girl went crazy with the card. Our guy says no, cuts his hand, shows it to her, and with an ability, the wound heals instantly. She feels confident and everyone is excited that they no longer need to fear getting hurt. Lin Miao then asks why she's feeling so tired. Our guy explains that it's the cost of the ability. Lin Miao says if it makes her that tired, it's better to use medicine. However, Yang Fen explains that at higher levels, she can regenerate an entire organ in a second. Lin Biao is all excited. Meanwhile, Yu is feeling envious, thinking she will have to gather a lot to buy one of those. But then our guy suddenly says he has an idea and tells them to stop the car. He says it's a good idea to go back to Leopard's base and steal everything while he's distracted with the monster. 
His sister says it's very dangerous, but he says that without the guy there, it will be very easy. Yu says she'll go too, but Mumu says she's too weak for that. The poor girl is left desolate, and in the next second, our guy is out of the car and heading towards the base. He easily defeats the zombies and goes back through the same place they left. Some guards are still there, but he quickly takes them down. He goes to the room where the guys hid the stone resources and starts collecting everything. And the most important thing, the two tubes of first order healing potions. As he collects everything, he's impressed that an ordinary guy managed to get so much. It looks like he'll have to evolve even faster if he wants to protect everyone. He uses the forge and creates a new type of bullet that can ignore physics. Then Leopard appears, asking what he's doing there again. Clearly, he's in bad shape, with a hole in his arm. Our guy says he came back too fast, his second ranking is really impressive. The guy transforms again, demanding he return everything. However, Yang Fen says the perfect time to kill an enemy is when they're injured. The guy takes a swipe and he dodges. He tries another attack and Yang Fen blocks it with his blade. Leopard realizes that with his claws damaged like that, he might not have a chance. Suddenly, he starts to flee, saying that next time, Yang Fen will die. But Yang Fen says it's too late now. He strikes him in the back and then pierces him. With that, he's dead on the ground and our guy says that's one less problem. A secondary evolution potion falls from his pocket. He drinks it immediately, saying that now it makes sense why he didn't find anything like that in the vaults. The boy is explosive, now jumping three meters high. Zombies are now like paper to him. Outside, he finds a motorcycle and after a while, arrives in the city. However, on the way, the ring reacted, so there was probably a vendor nearby. He went to the location he arranged with the girls and found the car. He followed the tracks until he saw a group gathered around something. Strangely, there were a lot of people immobilizing Sinan. He saw that they were normal people, not zombies. But if they were going to do that to a friend, he couldn't forgive them. However, when he was about to attack, Sinan said the guys were good people. And the guys explained they were forced to do it by the village chief and a kind of tree magic. Yangfen was confused, freed Sinan, and asked where his sister was. Immediately, the chubby guy started running saying they'd explain later and first needed to save the girls in the mayor's house. On the way, Yangfen asked what happened. Sedan explained that they were driving when a little girl fell on the hood. He stopped to help her, and she clung to his leg, saying her father was dying and needed help. Yu said it was dangerous, but Lin Mio explained that she could heal him quickly, and they could continue their journey. However, the little girl wasn't very friendly and thought the trap had worked. They approached a pink tree, and from a distance, a guy commented that the girl was getting very clever. They approached a wooden house, and she explained that her father was there. Yu looked around and found it strange that there were no zombies. The girl went inside and talked to her father, who was coughing. At that moment, Lin Mio went and used her ability to heal him. Apparently, the guy was really sick because he realized they weren't ordinary people. He got up and said it was amazing that she was really a doctor. King Shura patted the girl, saying her father was now fine. Meanwhile, Lin Mio was now exhausted. They were about to leave when the father told them to wait. Some guys kicked the door open, asking who the new people in the village were. The father said they could rob other people but should let these ones go. However, the guys ignored him and said they were going to collect all these girls. The father stood up and approached the chief, telling him not to do that, but got slapped in the face. Yu pointed her weapon and warned that anyone who moved would die. However, obviously, one of them came up behind King Shuer and took her hostage. With that, he ordered everyone to drop their weapons, and now they had no choice. The mayor ordered all the women to be taken to his house and the chubby guy to be tied to the pillar. The father begged them not to do it, but he got kicked again. He ordered his daughter to be tied up and warned that if he didn't kill the chubby guy on the pillar, his daughter would die. Meanwhile, Yang Fen and the chubby guy were running in that direction. They were a bit confused about the path until a guy in a black shirt appeared and said he'd take them to the place. It was the father of the girl who needed help and he said they were near the sacred tree. It was over 200 years old and had been protected by the village for generations. However, when the apocalypse started, the tree gained powers and killed villagers. But just when it was about to kill the chief, it stopped a second before. Since then, everyone has been worshipping him, thinking he has control over it. Yang Fen knew that trees couldn't be controlled like that unless the guy had an elf mutation. With that, they approached the house. Yang Fen arrived with a kick. The guy had immobilized everyone and was about to do something to you. But that's when Yang Fen showed up. The chief asked where the guards were and our guy said they were all dead. He jumped towards the guy and told him to get his hands off his woman. He freed the others while Yu was emotional that he called her his. The guy said to wait that he had an offer to make. Yang Fen asked why he was deceiving everyone while the guy was preparing to kill him. The guy tried to react with a weapon, but in half a second, our guy cut off his arm. The girl's father begged him not to kill the chief. However, Yang Fen explained that this guy wasn't the chosen one in the tree. But at that moment, another girl was taken hostage. Now the guy's daughter was being threatened. The chief smiled, saying the game had turned. While the father begged Yang Fen not to do anything to the guy on the ground, the other one was threatening his daughter. But without hesitation, Yang Fen finished off the chief, and at that moment, the guy like on this video that helps Momoro make more juicy content for his viewers, activate the cheeky little bell, and I'm out.